Welcome to today's Scratch lesson. We're going to be continuing with tutorial 3 on question and answers. This lesson is a continuation of the previous three tutorials that we did in the last three lessons. We will be using the lists that are shown to collect our question and answers. And we'll also have maths that will be using a random number to collect question and answers, just randomly chosen by the computer. But the lists are where we keep our collection of questions and answers. Our variables will just be storing basic bits of information for a short period of time. We'll use a variable to keep track of the score throughout. And we'll also have a variable to monitor which correct which question is being asked and we're probably going to need a variable to organize which question in each of the question and answer lists we are needing to use in this particular case we are going to bring in some code for the scratch cat the sprite when we click on the scratch cat then the whole 20 questions will be asked so here you have a good example of the god list showing all the god questions and we've got the God answers and you can see who is the God of the underworld Hades as the answer so the same thing would apply to our other bits which are the English and the English answers questions and the English answers so there we go it should make quite a lot of sense that these are just holding our information our questions and our answers if you look clearly in the data section it's going to show our lists and our variables so it's all in the data section this orange bit over here a little bit darker brown would show our lists and you can see those check boxes would activate that you can see them or take them away and i'll show that to you in a minute so here we have the collection of our information our questions and our answers i'd just like to show you how you take away these list boxes so if i click that check box if you click those english gods and gods answers and questions have all gone and it makes it a lot easier to just see everything i'm just going to move these variables there we've got chosen option gods yes these are all variables and you can find them with a light orangey color and i'm just trying to get them in some sort of order maths yes to indicate that we are going to be asking maths questions so there we have all the maths questions together and we'll have a score where we could see how well we've done that makes it a lot clearer yes english yes which will indicate that we have chosen english gods yes which indicates that we want to be asking questions in the gods category so these two are showing two different categories of questions our whole aim is to try develop a test that will ask a range of different questions all mixed together and that says maths yes in other words it's feeding in maths questions if we have maths yes and english yes that would mean we are doing a maths and english combination of questions being fed in which is going to be pretty exciting all right so it's it, it should be quite sensible and then maths number one and maths two would indicate that we have got two numbers that we're going to be working with to find an answer a chosen option would mean that we've chosen a particular one either english as one and we could have gods as two and mathematics as three so a chosen option would indicate which of those three are chosen look at this if we click on english it says one if i click on mathematics it says three and if i click on gods look it's showing two so those are showing each one of those three sprites english gods and maths are showing a variable to indicate which of them is chosen and otherwise they switch back to zero to indicate that the that they are switched off so chosen option is just choosing which of those three types of tests would be fed into our question and answer session. As we're using this as a learning tool, we want to feed in questions and answers. Everything that you're seeing over here are just variables, and these variables are being displayed so that it's easy for us to understand and see what their current status is and their data is usually being held in a number so i've used the number in this particular case but variables can hold dates and all different other sorts of data types here you've got maths number one and maths number two and that'll be i will use times to kind of work through that 
I'm just going to show you how to switch off the variables so you don't see them. They can become invisible if you usually at the end of your game and you no longer want to see them. So if you can see that, it's a lot clearer. We know that when we click on English or we click on gods or we click on mathematics, it's setting the variables, but it's no longer needed to be seen, that they are invisible. I'm just going to switch on these variables again because it's really important that when you build something that you understand the logic of what you're doing and when you see those variables it makes it quite clear to you about what's going on and you can see the lo logic very distinctly. So this is how you make a variable. You just click on new variable, make a variable and then you give it a name and you'll press OK and that will bring up the variable. But it's really important to see these variables at particular moments in your development and at later stages to actually take them out of the whole program. So make a variable. And I'm going to just give it a history variable. So I'll call it history and we'll go with a Boolean. Boolean means either yes, no or true or false kind of answer. So we'll go with history. Yes, indicating yes that we are going to be asking questions in history. Obviously, I'm just showing you how to do this. It's not really part of our game that we're going to have history at all. I just wanted to show you how to make a variable because there's some of you probably would like to know how that's done. So I'm just going to go delete variable. Did you see I right clicked and delete variable would take that away. And once again, let's just take these variables away and we're going to click on those check boxes and they are all becoming invisible again. And you can see here's our lists. If I check on those, they also gain visibility. They become part of what we can see and make it a lot clearer. It's always important to see what's going on. And by clicking on English and, and now if I click on the green flag, we're going to activate by clicking on the green flag, it says add a question and this little input box, this blue box with the tick at the bottom would allow us to add in a question in the specific category, either English, Maths or our God section. I'm just going to activate the appropriate variables, chosen option and English is so you can see where it feeds in to the appropriate section. We want to collect a whole range of different questions. So we're going to see if that works at all. So we've clicked on the English and if we click on it now, look over there, English yes is one, meaning it's active. We're in the state of feeding in English questions and it should say chosen option should be also indicating. When we click on the flag of our Scratch Cat, then you'll see that we start feeding in questions and answers into the appropriate lists. So we have all this bit of code here with an ask and an answer, which is indicating where the question and answers would be fed in. So that's collecting a whole range of questions and answers. And where would we type in our question and answers? Obviously, we'd use the input box, that little checkbox at the bottom there, where we have an op opportunity to fill it in. Here we've got an or statement. If it says not English, yes. So in other words, not choosing English. And the chosen option is, or the chosen option as one, so that we know it would not be English, then we know we'd fall into the category of having our questions being fed in. So let's try it out. We're just gonna see what happens. What is a noun? That's a good question. And here we have that it asks us what would be the answer to the question, what is a noun? And we just write name. So we're just going to write a naming word because nouns are naming words. I'm going to be pretty simplistic about my question and answers. Oh no, you can see that it hasn't really recorded our question and answers into the appropriate lists. As you saw, I typed in and nothing came into the English questions nor into the English answers. So we have a bit of a problem here, but that's not too bad because we have to work through the logic and find out what is missing. Part of the enjoyment of coding is always trying to discover where one went wrong and to go through the process of trying to find one's errors. So let's go through that again. Unfortunately, we're going to just write it. What is a noun? And we'll just write naming words. So tick that and now it's asking us for the answer and we're going to just type naming word 
or name word okay so that should be fine and again you can see it has not fed into the list so we know we've got to have a good look at this part of the code over here so I'm gonna bring that up and I'm gonna put it over here I think just outside of that else and we'll have a look and see if that can correct us so I'm just gonna type what is noun a noun and sometimes it becomes a bit tedious that you've got to repeat things and we'll put naming word again and very often when you do test your code it's good to just feed in um, stuff that's just nonsense like just to see if it works before one starts feeding in a lot of type type notes and things that are quite tedious to put in like x and y and that type of thing i'm just going to fiddle around and see if i can sort this logic out and try and move things it says here english answers and english let's just bring that right to the beginning and see if that's going to make any difference it should feed it in i'm going to move this right to the front and i'm just going to take out that not that does not look sensible because we're talking about english is one so we're going to say english is equal to one or we could have that the chosen option is equal to one and that would surely indicate that we're talking about english the this should improve our logic let's have a look so we add a question i'm going to type it all again what is a noun i should have just typed in x what is a noun just typing in x would have been a lot better and it says what is your answer and yes it has brought in a question good we're getting there so i'm going to write naming word a noun is a naming word and it should go into the answers and there it is we have success we've managed to get a question and an answer so we could add another question and let's just see if that's going to work so what is a verb i'm not being too good with my questions and that has not gone in and it says a doing word if i click on that those have not been fed in so we've taken one step forward but yet we haven't got the complete answer and we're not feeding in a whole range of different question and answers straight after each other but it's working somewhat so we have a, de a great deal of success but we still need to build up our selves to be able to get a whole range of questions being fed in so if we go and click on that flag we could add in questions like this but this is not ideal and we could add in our second one what is a verb and we know that we've got the english yes is one so it's it's definitely fed in and we said an action word and we could and we could go around doing it that way but it's really quite a poor bit of of coding I'm just going to correct the logic in the God section, taking out that not, that's definitely not going to work. We know that that is definitely inadequate, so we'll just get it similar to what we did in the English section. And I'm just going to, out of pure laziness, just see what will happen, just with that small little change to type in a question. So I click on the flag, and let's just see what happens now. So let's just type in any question, what is the word? Mm, I'm trying to think of a good question. Mm. Let's go with something that relates to the name of a person. So it's important capital letters. What do we call a person? What do we call a person? And the name of a person. Let's go with what do we call a name of a person? So we'll go with like the proper noun and we'll just write in the answer as a proper noun and we know that's feeding into the english section because obviously we still have our variables indicating chosen option is one and our english is yes english yes is one so english yes is one is just going to feed into to that so we know if we type in another one and i'll just type in another question and after this question is typed in, it should be on the basis of our variables feeding into the appropriate sections, the English section as well. So it's working. We are achieving quite a bit. It's not perfect, but we have some sort of system going here. What is the gender? Let's go with gender of him. I'm asking a really silly question. His and etc so can't really think of great questions today so i'm just going to go with those two and we know that we're dealing with the 
the mail. So it's you can see on the basis of our variables that all the time as I feed in questions, um, they're always going to go into the English because of the, the fact that those variables are set. So we call this a state. We've got a state that the computer is set in a particular mode, that it's feeding in constantly into those two lists, the questions and the answer in the English list. So we can ask, what does a sentence start with? And we all know that that's going to be an answer of a capital letter. So we're going to just type capital letter because all sentences capital letter. And will answer with that and you can see if you scroll down you can see that we have our question and answers are in that section what i find pretty neat in scratch is all those numbers in the lists indicating how many questions we have and that's quite useful as well and now i'm going to switch on the god section so if you see the chosen option needs to be on god section god yes and we're going to try see what we can do in those. There it says God yes, and that would indicate a one that we are wanting to feed in God questions about theology. And a chosen option would therefore be for the gods would be two. So every time you click on the gods, it'll feed into that section. So let's just start, try see if anything works here. So I'm going to add a question, and I'm going to just activate the question here. Who was the messenger of the gods? I'm not sure if we're talking about Roman or Greek gods, but I'm thinking of Mercury, messenger of the gods, Mercury. Mercury. We know that Mercury is found in Greek. Um, sorry, Hermes was found in Greek mythology, and in Roman mythology, you would have Mercury. So that's just an interesting bit of information. You can see I've activated the gods' questions and the gods' answers. And you can see that it's put some of our English questions here, just deleting them, doing word, naming word, and all of these do not belong here. So it's feeding in to the wrong section. So we're going to have to look in our God section over here, which it says God's yes equals one, chosen option equals two, and we're feeding into the God section and God's answer. So we've got to have a good look at this, and we can see, got to look at it very carefully and try and find where it is feeding into the English section. So we're going to try to find our mistake. We're going to see where we've gone wrong. I don't know about this Ill, else, if else bit of condition, conditional code. I'm going to take that out. And I'm just going to bring in an if then statement. And we'll just bring this in. We're going to then take the test to see whether God's yes equals one and chosen option equals two. And we'll see what that does. We'll just type something in and see what happens. Um, I'm being a bit lazy. I should scrutinize that code a lot better than I am at this stage. Messenger of the gods. We know that's Mercury. The counterpart in the Romans would be Hermes would be the Greek and the count the Romans would be Mercury. So Hermes was was the Greek counterpart to Mercury. Messenger of the gods. All right. So we add the question. And if you look over here, it does not look like it's feeding in. So we know we've got to go back to that logic and look at that code. I cannot be lazy. I've got to kind of think about this. I'm sure so many of you would be able to already see the mistake in my code. You can look in the English list. Look, we're already feeding in. There's a whole lot of questions about the gods, messenger of the gods, Mercury. So let's just get these out. And we have on the answers as well. We're just going to get those out. They're just being fed into the English lists. So we have definitely got some inadequate bits of coding that are feeding into the wrong place. So let's have a good look at the code. I'm not going to get away with it. I need to look at it more carefully. So we're looking, the English section definitely is correct. And we'll have to just go and look at that. English is yes. English variable is set to zero and the else part says that the english variable is set to one so it's an on and off switch we have an on and off switch over there we see that whenever the variable is set to on then we would switch it off or else switch it on so it's basically just checking it's whether it's on or off but here you can see how we set a variable got set score but if we wanted to set god's yes equals zero we would leave it at that 
and we could bring drag this in and we could set uh, our variable over here and we'll choose like for instance maths yes equals zero so that would be switching off both of those maths and god's yes would be switched off that's when we are using the english sprite so we would switch the others off okay so it's only feeding in that so now we're in the god section so i think we can do more or less the same that we're going to switch off the english and the maths so we will then do exactly what we've just done we're going to drag in the variable set and we're going to drag and let's start with english we set it to zero it's switched off and then we're going to do drag in the mathematics as well to switch that set mathematics mathematics should also be switched off so it'll be maths yes is zero and then we'll do the last to the maths and that'll switch off the english and the gods the two other sections so we go english yes is zero and we're going to do set the gods as well should also be off all right so we would switch off those two And this is pretty good because now we have a situation that when we choose one of those sprites, gods, English or maths, it just switches off all the others. And therefore, when we feed in the questions, they should go into the appropriate sections. So let's try it out. So if we click on gods. We know that the gods question should be fed in. We can have a look and we'll see if that really does work. We'll just make everything a little bit neater and smaller so we can see it, it does look a little bit cluttered at this stage. And we'll put the two gods question and answers together and we know that when we click on gods now it should put got it into gods yes should be one and it'll it'll indicate that that's going to be fed into the gods section let's put that english but over here the english question and answers and we'll test it in a second english answers over there and I'm going to go with it in a minute. So I'm going to click on flag, click on the gods, and look there it is. Gods yes equals one, and chosen option equals two. So we know that the gods chosen option is two, so it should work. Let's have a look. Messenger of the gods. I'll just type messenger. We know that that was Mercury, the counterpart being Hermes in the Greek mythology. So let's have a look, and we're going to see if it's going to feed in to the gods section so god sections and we're not getting it right it's not working so let's have a look through our code it says god's yes equals one now we know that god's yes equals one and those two are switching the god's yes indicates yes we want to work with gods and then the chosen option of the gods we know is two so it does look as if we are correct so let's click on gods if we click on the god sprite look it's our oh, gods yes equals one so that means now it should work if we click in a question gods one equals yes we've switched everything else off and that should work we're going to test it in a minute so we'll see if it brings it into those sections and look it's brought the into the English section again. So we've got a little bit of logical in inconsistencies here. English answers, what we we got to see, it didn't bring in the answer, but it did bring in a God question into the English section. You can see that it's quite a lot of reasoning, thinking here very carefully, trying to find your mistakes. It's one of the beauties of computer coding. I'm just going to type it in and I'm going to write messenger. We know that that counterpart would be Hermes and we're talking about Mercury. So we know that the gods question and we'll go with Mercury. And I wonder if it's going to do anything now. Hopefully we'll see something happening. I'm not really going through this. Oh, God answer Mercury. We see it there. And let's have a look at the God questions. Let's type another one and see what happens now. Let's go with something to do with books. So I'm going to go with holy book. And most people will know of a holy book. They've all got different holy books, but we'll go with the Bible for this in this particular case. So let's just write Bible. And we have, if we scroll down, we can see it written holy book there in the questions. And has it, it yes, it's brought it into the answers as well. So we have success. We're moving on. And there's some development here. 
I'm going to bring in some Eastern theology, probably not theology, but about 500 BC or 500 before the Christian era, we had an ancient religion or an ancient philosophy called Buddhism. So we go with the ancient religion of Asia. Some Buddhists would say that that's not really a religion or they don't consider themselves a religion. So let's write Buddhism. It is came through Buddha. And that question about Buddhism would also be fed into the God's lists. All right, so we have question and answers being fed into the English list, and now we've got them fed into the God's list. So we're starting to build up a little system, a whole collection. Let's just move this, and we're repeating 20 questions when we click on the sprite, that being sprite. The cat over here, scratch cat. When we click on scratch cat, we're going to go through a whole lot of question and answers. We're going to start with questions that relate to the English section. So it says here, and here you can see we're picking a random number that is from one to the length of how many English questions we have. The English questions are called English. So we would choose then one of them and ask it of the English sections. So if you look here, it says ask, and it is a random number, one of those in that list. So it's choosing an index or one of those numbers. Let's just test this out. And if we click over there, we see ancient religion of Asia. It's asking us a God's question. So we could type something and it says messenger. That's the next question. So it's asking us from the God's section. So we got something happening here that gives us some indication of how this works. Although it's not entirely what we, ancient religion of Asia, we know that that would be about 500 BC Buddha, holy book being the Bible. And I'm just typing any old nonsense in here to kind of see it, God of the underworld, and that was Hades. It was a question that we had right in the beginning. Now we know why these questions are coming out of the God section is because we've still set our variables and there they are to chosen options and God yes, indicating that we're working with those sections. And you can already see the logic of that. I'm just going to switch these variables off, but you can see that if we take that away, we could even bring in a score over here. We've got God's yes equals one and chosen option equals two, which is our option of God's. And that all sets the whole state for question and answers in the God's section. So if you look over here, We've got everything down here, it says, if, and let's just have a look at this. If we bring in that, and and now we get to the real challenge, which is trying to find out whether we got the answer right or wrong. So that means we're going to have to test and see whether our answer fits with the appropriate answer in the list. So we're going to bring in answer, because we know that that was what we typed in the input box at the bottom the answer whether that equals and we're going to need to work a little bit with this code over here pick random number so i'm going to have to change and create a variable so we're going to call this variable chosen let's go with question you know Question number. Question number is appropriate because that would show which question we are busy with. And that would be the question in that particular list. So question number is going to be set to a random number that we've chosen. Computer will choose it. Random number between the first and the last in the list of those items in the list. And then we're going to bring in question number, ask item question number. And now we're going to then have the question number as an indicator as that variable to give us some idea of what that is. So the answer to that. So if we we have a lot more to work for through. If you study this carefully, you'll see that that's, that's probably a good thing. And now all we need to do is just bring in if the answer that we've typed in is equal to the item in the list which is appropriate to the question number then we know we've got it so we're just going to scroll up and find a question number and we can drag that and put it in over here and this should be our test so we know that if those our answer is equal to that then we have a correct answer so we're going to bring we're going to test if our answer is over here we'll drag this in if our answer is equal to the appropriate question number of the answer in our list and question number is the number that 
is indicated. If they are the same, then we know we got it right. And then we could make an appropriate change to our score, or we could just indicate that it was right. So we'll write in here, say, um, we could just say good, uh, got it right. And that's, we'll put it for about four seconds. So that indicates that we got it right. And we could later on just bring in a bit of a change of score. So let's go set and we'll change the score to add a point. So we can, oh, I'll take that out. I think we could just change score by one. That just makes it a bit easier. Change score by one. So we'll increment our score. Our score will be going up each time we get a correct answer. And remember, we're working with 20 questions here. So let's change that to five and we'll test our code. And here we go. So let's have a look. Who is the God of the underworld? And we know that that is Hades. Hades is the God of the underworld. And we know that we're going to type that in in a minute and we'll see whether our answers correlate, whether they are appropriate. And we know that we, what do we call the name of a person? And we know that we've set it for English now. So we call it noun. And you see our score still zero. What do we start a sentence with? We know that that would be a capital letter. And we're going to just see if we get this one right. Otherwise, we've got inconsistencies and we'll have to go back to our code. What is a noun? And it's still remaining the zero. The score is not changing. So we have a problem. And do you, do you see the mistake? Oh, there it is. It's just indicating that we're talking about in this section, God answers. But remember, this is all to do with English. Yes, it's English that we have, that we we checking the English answers in, in the in the God list. So we have to choose the English answers from the English list. So this should work now. So we everything's set for English. We know that we can test our code and we're going to go what we click on our scratch cat. What do we call the name of a person? And that would be a noun. And what do we start a sentence with capital? Hopefully our score should go up capital got it right it's indicating that we have got it right score goes up by one do you see that and then what is a verb a verb we know is to do with action so it's an action word unfortunately we we have to get it exactly got it right and that would take our score to two it's gone up to two what is a verb and it's asking the same question again it is a doing word and that would not give us the correct answer because remember we typed in just a minute ago action word so and now we're doing a doing word again obviously it wouldn't be right and our score remains as two but what we have here is something that's working and we can all see that it's basically asking us a test of five questions what is the gender of him his and her male got it right and our score definitely will go up we need to just remember that we've got to set our score to zero at the beginning. What is a noun? And we know that that was a naming word. And we're going to just set that score to zero because it's very important that at the beginning of every test, all tests start at zero. So we're going to go and just set our score to zero. And that should set that every single time we do a test, it's a new test. It's not just each test adding collectively and adding all the marks up together. It has to be, each test has its own unique score. I'm just going to copy this and put it in here. So we're talking about here with the God section and just move that away and we'll see whether we can get that one right. And remember, we're going to have to set God's yes. Now remember the God's was two. Chosen option, God's yes is one. Chosen option is two. That's correct. So we've got the God's section. And it's doing exactly what it did in the English section, but now with the gods choosing a appropriate number and it would then get a score. So we can test it now on the gods section. If I click gods, you can see gods yes is one. It's indicating that we're in the gods mode and the chosen option would be two. So what is the god of the underworld? And if I type in there, that would be Mercury. We know that that Mercury would be incorrect, it would be Hades, and that would got it right our score goes up by one it's taking a bit long to get the score who is the god of the underworld it's again choosing the same question Hades hopefully it's not going to just keep on with the same one all the time 
who is the God of the underworld? I see it's repeating the same question, Hades. And that means we have a problem because it's just repeating the same question over and over again. We'll find why it is doing that. There you see an, another indication of that. Hades is found in Greek mythology and not in Roman mythology. So when you hear of Hades, you'll always know it relates to the Greeks and their ancient myths. And let's have a look over here. We've got ask question and it's giving us a question number of gods. And we know that that's not right because we haven't really set our questions. It's still taking the question number from the English section. So we have to set that setting of the question number is where we've, we're going to have to correct it. So we're going to just do what we did in the English section and we're setting it to the picking a random number over there. We'll duplicate this, bring it in, and we know that's from the gods section. Gods. All right, and that should bring in um, an improvement. That should bring our code and make it a lot better. All right, and that tests our questions. You can see it's about gods, got it right, and our score increments. And that should bring a difference every single time. So let's click on and start again. Click on our holy book, and we know we typed in Bible. The Bible is the Christian's holy book. Got it right. Our score should increment. It's going to go up by one, and that's correct. It has. Who is the god of the underworld? That's Greek mythology we're talking about here. So again, we got Hades. And that should also increment to bring our score to two. And Messenger, we know that that was dealing with Mercury, the Roman count, counterpart of the Greek. And Greek one was Hermes. And that brings our score to three. And it seems to be working. We Our test is choosing a random question, testing it against an appropriate answer. Everything's working pretty well. And it's even indicating we could make this two because it's taking too long to tell us we got it right. We have a great deal of success and we're starting to see things happening and uh, it's all working pretty well. So let's just have a look at our code again and have a good squiz at what we have here. And we can already see that we've got a picking of a random number. We get in the math section, so we're going to choose our first number, second number, which are both randoms between 2 and 12, and then we're going to multiply them together, and then after multiplying them, work out our score. So here we've got a join. We're joining the first number with the second number, and we're just making a statement that can be shown in the ask section. So that's going to be shown to the user. The user will see it. It'll ask him a question and then he will type in an answer and it'll check if it is the same as the answer. And if he has got it right, it will then do exactly what it did before. It'll increment the score. We could even bring an interesting factor here where we change the score by minus one. So it drops the score if it's in math. So let's just show you how that would work. You can hardly see the math section here. So if I click on maths, you can see we're in now going to be chosen option is three for mathematics, chosen option three for mathematics, and that puts it into a mathematical um, sort of, uh, we're going to be asking mathematical questions. We are in mathematics mode. Okay, and you can see over here, if I go to mathematics, I'm setting the English off. Oh goodness, look over here, and it's setting maths off. So I'm going to sw switch gods to be zero. Now it's correct. So if I click on mathematics, watch over here, I'm going to click on the mathematics and you can see that it's chosen option three, which is mathematics and gods is off. So everything's working perfectly. Well, let's test it. So we're going to go 14, got it right. And now nine times two, we know that that's going to be 18 and we'll just get that one. It's gone up by two. So everything seems to be working really well. And we've got 10 times nine and it's 90. So our mathematics application seems to be working pretty well. 35 would be the answer to this one. 35, six times five is 35. I got that one purposefully wrong. That is not right. So we brought that into our five times nine. Let's see how that works. Five times nine is 45. And we can see that everything seems to be working pretty well in this scratch game. 
I think we've achieved quite a bit in this lesson. It's taken us a bit of a long time. I expected to do this in about 30 minutes, but as you can see, we have everything working in quite good order and the whole basis of, from which to work is in place. And uh, it, we have a score going, we can choose our different sections, we can put our computer program into various modes, God, mathematics or English, and we can even derive a score. I hope that you found this lesson interesting. And if, if not, if you have any suggestions, please, if you could contact us, but we welcome you and thank you for your support throughout. And if you found it a little bit too complicated with a lot of a lot of code, please do study it more intensely and just try to see how it all fitted together and was brought together at the end. It does offer some opportunity to develop an interesting learning tool that could be quite effective in preparation for exams and so forth.